In this experimental setup, effects of nicotine from smoking can be measured with special instruments. Although the smoker absorbs relatively small amounts of nicotine, sensitive instruments can record its effect. For instance, these thermocouples record the influence of nicotine upon the body temperature. In this experiment, we see that the skin temperature gradually drops from 0.80 on the graph to about 65, or 15 points. The skin temperature drops because blood vessels constrict under the influence of nicotine, and less blood reaches the skin. Experiments with animals help dramatize the effect of nicotine on the nerve cells of the heart. By applying the drug directly to the exposed nerve of a rabbit's heart, we induce a change in rhythm. To understand better what is happening, let us look at a schematic drawing. In the experiment, nicotine was applied at the spot indicated by the arrow. And this is one nerve cell called a ganglion cell. Nicotine first stimulates the nerve cells, then it paralyzes them. See how the rabbit's heart first beats slower then speeds up as the nicotine stimulates and subsequently paralyzes the nerve cells of the heart. In the observation chamber, the research scientists simultaneously the action of nicotine upon the human heart, breathing, skin temperature, and blood pressure. The multiple graph indicates that this man's heart has not been visibly affected by the nicotine. The graph in the middle reproduces the pattern of breathing. We've seen that nicotine causes the heart to beat more rapidly, and often irregularly. We've also seen that nicotine causes blood vessels to contract. There is a connection between the two. When the heart beats faster, it pumps more blood through the blood vessels, which nicotine has made narrower. As a result, blood pressure increases. Smoking is dangerous for persons suffering from disorders of blood vessels of the extremities, such as in the case of Berger's disease. To demonstrate the action of the autonomic ganglion cells of the intestines, we place a piece of rabbit intestine in a glass container. The rhythmic movement of the intestine continues even after it is from the animal. The scribe shows normal peristalsis. Now we inject nicotine into the solution. The reaction is violent. This is one reason why doctors often advise patients with peptic ulcers, chronic heartburn, or spastic intestines to abstain from smoking. Nicotine also acts upon the central nervous system. It stimulates it and produces a quickening of brain activity, which creates a feeling of nervousness and excitement. This rabbit reacts calmly to petting and tapping. But as soon as nicotine has acted upon it, the rabbit reacts to the same treatment with convulsions and tremor. Nicotine that enters the lungs of the smoker spreads rapidly through the body. In turn, it is excreted in urine, saliva, and sweat. After several days, all nicotine leaves the body, but the urge to smoke remains. This urge is the result of a complex set of causes, most of them psychological. Contrary to other habit-forming drugs, no bad after-effects are known to result from giving up smoking. The question is then, why do people smoke? It's sociable. I never thought why I smoked. I started smoking when I was quite young. My parents smoke, so do I. Most people start smoking in imitation of a hero, or because they think that it makes them look important, grown up, or sophisticated, or they just stumble into the habit. But once formed, it is a hard habit to break. On the other hand, smoking is not an inborn, inherited, or natural urge. Beginners, almost without exception, find smoking irritating. Sometimes reactions are quite violent, and yet, smoking is a widespread social habit, so widespread that considerable money is spent on the study of its effects. What are the conclusions of research at this time? 
For one thing, there seems to be agreement that smoke causes irritation of air passages. <laughs> a smoker's cough is a well-known sound. Of the many tar compounds in the tobacco smoke, we cannot tell with certainty which one or ones cause irritation. Our way of life makes it necessary for many people to live in air polluted with industrial smoke, dust, and car exhaust. Add to this the irritation of tobacco smoke and draw your own conclusions. Experiments with mice are being conducted in several universities. Scientists suspect that certain constituents in the smoke, probably some of the tarry substances, may cause cancer in the respiratory tract, especially in the lungs of smokers. By smearing tars obtained from tobacco smoke and polluted city air on the skin of mice, scientists have already succeeded in inducing cancer in mice. Research in this area is relatively new. Observers also point at the high incidence of lip and tongue cancers found among pipe smokers. The increase in heart ailments in recent years alerted medical research to a closer observation of smoking habits of heart patients. There seems to be considerable agreement about the effect of smoking upon the human organism. But a great deal more work is needed to explain the potentially dangerous effects of smoke tars. Smoking is a widespread social habit, a habit very easily acquired, but very hard to break. Helped by advertising and glamorizing, it makes new converts easily, especially among the young. Armed with these facts, it must be the decision of each and every individual whether he or she will take the risks of smoking.